All right, everybody, we are on to repair number three for today. This is a bearing replacement and rebuild on a front gang of our John Deere disc. What is the number for this disc? Do you know? We just went through all this with the parts. There's um, B, BW, and B was it? W, it's a BWA. BWA. That's what it is. Like, like 13 foot 6 or 13 foot 9 or something like that. Yeah. So essentially it's a 14 foot disc, right? No. No? It doesn't cover that much. Okay, so I measured it off with my feet. It's 13 feet wide on the back. So, I don't know if they call it a 12 or a 14, because the front would probably be 12 foot wide. So what we got into is we had to get the field finished, and he noticed partway through that the bearing was going bad on, was it the outside or the inside? The inside and the front? So yeah. his two discs were running against each other, and that is not supposed to be. There's some little things, you know, it's an old disc. He said it's probably from the 70s, but either way, it was when they switched to a sticker tag for the model and serial number, and that is a problem because this is more like a clear vinyl type sticker, and of course, it's not gonna last for any amount of time. So long term, this stuff gets used, probably not cleaned up so much, and stored outside. All in all, it's been about a week and a half. We were waiting on one of the short spools. They call it a short and a long spool. So these, is it these three are all the same? Um, yeah. And then this is the short spool? That, I don't remember. Wait. I always just look at another gang when I put them back together when we have to wait for parts. So I... Okay, so is this the one that came shipped? Um, the one to the left of it. Right here? Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay. I knew it probably had to be one of these two that got shipped to us because there's no grease in it. And this one is a little bit greased up. So it is part number B15106B. And we actually were able to find somebody who sells parts online and he said he was in the middle of moving and call me on uh, Monday if it's not up on the website on the weekend. It wouldn't let me add it to the cart. So we waited. One guy had it on eBay and he had both parts, the short spool and the long spool, but we only needed the longer spool. So the guy online, I called him Monday. He said, oh, it's still on the disc. He wasn't able to get it off, so he never actually had it in inventory in the first place. So we wasted four days with that guy. Ran around, did other parts last Monday. We were getting like the hubcap for the car and truck parts. So now this new part finally came in. Was it yesterday it came in? So now we are set up and trying to get as much done we can today in between rains because we're in a rainy period and we have one more field to disc over here to the south end of the house. So about how big is our last field that we have to disc? Two acres or three. Yeah, it was originally like five or six. I think it was six and we split it up into the pasture and a field and we found that we can't put pasture with animals up to the road because too many people go off the road and we would be replacing the fence a lot. There's whiskey bottles, Almost beer bottles, every beer cans. Day somebody yeah, every day. And like all winter people just bite. So, no you know. fence by the roads here. Yeah. Uh, and I I told him before I said I would not want to deal with him gone at work, have somebody go through the fence and have a bull out there attacking them because they're in his fence or a bull out in the neighborhood that I got to deal with, you know. If you keep a bull, you got to have a fence that can keep them in.
but I don't know about building a fence to keep cars out. It's not <laughs> so. worth it here. We're out in the middle of nowhere and people are drinking. Um, Especially now with the bars closed, there's more. We have a neighbor that more. takes a bike ride around the block every couple days or whatever and ends up with a minimum of like, what is it, $25 a week in beer. So 250 beer cans going around this section every week. Mm -hmm. So, And that's a dangerous bike ride. <laughs> but there's a lot of drinking in, going on and um, they, they end up in the ditch too much to put that nice of a fence just to let them keep smashing it. So we'll, we'll just go the, we're close enough to the road, we'll go a little the other yeah. way. And in the, yeah, in the other direction where we have a big field, we had a car upside down um, in our field last year about this time because I remember it was just at the beginning of the season when school would be letting out and you know they always used to run these uh, students against drunk driving and mothers against drunk driving campaigns so yeah, how many times they roll it oh a few a few they went several hundred feet away from the curve where they lost it and then up into the field so too much drinking and driving for fences up by the road yep. so lucky for us we weren't out there doing field work at that time that's all planted now, and we've got to get this this done so that we can get on to the last couple of acres. So he's very dutifully cleaning up all of his grease zerks and getting the packed in dirt out of everything. What are those big block castings called? I don't know. They they go up into these standards. Mm, okay. And then the pins go through and hold it. So it's a Compared to Lake Oliver, it was a nice idea. All you have to do is pull these pins, lift your disc up, and get out of the way where in Oliver, you have to torch or grind off all your old bolts because you can't ever get them back apart. Right. Take, unbolt it. Um, this is just a nice idea. A lot of this old quit equipment, they make it very um, do-it-yourself repair friendly so that you don't have to call a dealer to come out and fix it or you know an outside mechanic to come in and do work which is really handy for us we have plenty of repairs that we're always doing or behind on or scheduled ahead so parts are readily available on things like this and people have even said ah the heck with it and they'll part it out and people are making small food plot discs out of sections so a lot of these parts are available from part outs um, on eBay or online. And when he was taking this apart, I was gonna show it to you and he had it all dismantled so fast that I didn't get much. And it's, it's quick. So we got a whole uh, new cone bearing that goes in there. This is several pieces that all go together and we were able to get this online, have it shipped here. This came really fast, considering how long it took for the other parts to come. So he cleaned up all of his pieces and parts, and it's just the reassembly today. So that's what all went bad and caused your trouble in the first place. Yeah, just here, this I'll, cone I'll, bearing. I'll grab the other one. When it went bad, we wanted to get the field finished because there was rain coming. So we just kept running it. So all these little rollers and all that stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. So that's that. These, oh, I got into that one. This one was okay. This is one of the seals that was mangled and the other one was destroyed. So that is that. Mm, okay. And so, it kind of, so this is actually a pretty good deal at John Deere. This whole piece is $112, which I think is good. This casting, both seals, both cones, double bearings, zerk, everything. Complete for $112. The whole deal, which their stuff has been nuts, but that I think is cheap for what you get. The thing is, 
this, the double taper bearing, both races or whatever, and both seals were 53 on line with no shipping. Mm -hmm. So if you're rained out and you have time, still. How much was it? $53, no shipping. Okay. No tax. So pre pretty good. And all of our $112 parts were still good? This is fine. Yeah. It so, didn't cause any wear. Yeah, I, won't, I got into it, but yeah. it's not going to affect it. Oh, I see. Okay. But they have wear. I mean, all of them, eventually, if they were so slot, see this right here? Yeah. This is worn. I just didn't want to spend more than twice the money um, for as little work as this has to do for us. So. Yeah. 53 is better than 112. So this year, all of our acres here are going to be planted to hay. So essentially, I mean, unless we increase our land, we're done disking mm -hmm. and plowing and everything else. There's nothing that is for sale. <laughs> right. So. so he oiled his cast and he's using a giant socket to help press that in. Now you could just use the shout press too, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this side I just have to put it in far enough to find that groove and put a clip in it. Mm -hmm. Then I'll flip it over, put this in it, and then you you trap it in with the other race. So your option from John Deere was to buy the whole complete unit. Yeah, I think he said... Instead that, of just the cone bearing. I think he told me you can get all these pieces from John Deere separate if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I think he said, and I, I believe him, that that was like as much or more than buying the whole thing. Because I, you know, when they want $50 for a little brass fitting that's this big... Mm -hmm. When you hear that that's 112, that's not like what they've been, you know, so, but we didn't need to buy the whole thing. And we came across this as a kit um, accidentally. It, we started putting in part numbers, and if it had the part number in a kit, then it showed us, and we were like, oh my, that's just terrific. Just, yeah, that's the right one. Get it coming. So this is what it's going to all look like when it's complete. And there's three because one mounts here, there, and at the end. So to show it to you on a complete unit, there's your outer in the center of the gang and on the innermost disc of the gang right there. Boy, it's a good thing we have a power washer now. This got quite dusty and messy from that last job. So what makes a bearing go bad? Um. It might have lost a seal and started getting dirt in it. Mm-hmm. But just... Just from banging around, hitting rocks. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the one seal was torn and then it wasn't getting the grease right or something. But that's all. <laughs> My battery died. I had to run back in and get a charged up one. So he got that all tapped back together so we're gonna do a reassembly that looks real good he was telling me before I went in he greases the disc every time he uses it it was just time for a bit of a repair or replacement we got a couple of scrapers that are missing I had noticed when I was doing the disking but you're not supposed to be disking in the mud and they're real expensive to find if you disk in the mud you're gonna get compaction and you're not gonna get a good disking anyway 
but he has a job. He's extending our driveway behind the barn, and it's so packed down from years and years of hauling manure out of the barn that he wants to hit it with the disc so that he can just keep scraping it to get it leveled out the way he likes. We're moving, the, we're moving it to get more feet. Yeah. So we'll get the last little, it got to the point the scraper wouldn't dig anymore. It was dry and packed, and then we got this rain. And then I'll go hit it with the disc, and it'll just be gone, and then we'll put the new road. We'll just keep mm -hmm. extending the road all the way to the woods as yeah. we have time. I had asked him about um, taking half of the two-acre field and extending the cow's pasture, which was still going to be plenty far away from the road, but then we get into utility easement space, and we just decided it might be better to not do that but it's in a low area that in the snow if we have to load out cattle it takes the suburban everything it's got to get a couple of loaded cattle out of that pen between the snow and being in a low area pulling uphill with a trailer so I don't know what we'll decide about that I think um, how I've seen some people loading cattle they have like a a walkway or a hallway that the cattle have to get to but if they never go through it like to a shelter it's just like loading pigs they don't want to go our cattle seem to always know that something is up when they see the cattle trailer someone's gonna disappear <laughs> So there's no bearing on the other end. It's just a cap that holds the outer disc where it's supposed to sit. Yeah, it's still three there. Let's show you what I mean. It's just a cast piece. So that's the short spool. That's the short one. B one five one zero four B. And then you put in... How nice that you've got some examples there to follow. Yeah, I always have to do it the same way. He tears things apart so fast. I always make a video as I tear it apart. The zerk it helps faces me. backwards. And then we put the fairing in. First fairing. And then it's the it's gonna be this one. Quite sure it's this 106. And that's gonna pinch that. Hopefully the wind noise isn't getting you too much. George is running a articulated four-wheel drive 7020 today. That's going to be three full spools.
So he just realized at the final step of reassembly that his piece here that he had left on that's supposed to be for the end actually isn't even the part for this disc or this part. They just put a different part on it. They had some wear on the end on that last gang and they took the one from the front and put it on the back of there and then had this one up on the front for some reason. So he's going to make that right. He's... Now why would there be wear to cause a gap? They get loose and they wear the parts out in the middle so it gets narrower. So you, you buy these big washers and you can make up for it. I see. So when they had an extra part off another, that part doesn't even go on this style disc. They had that laying around, so they took the end cap mm -hmm. for that gang, doubled it up on this one. They used washers other places, but it's just from wear. I see. So they put the part I need right now is right here, and this is the one for this gang. So I got to get that keeper and that off, and then do something else more properly. So it's just all that wear has been made up for over the years. Yeah, see here, there's four big washers. Yeah, and a big square knot off mm -hmm. something else. So we'll get them all tight again and. Okay. You get that right then. Yeah. I know you will. You'll get it. Yeah. I have to get the big wrench out and stand on it. Well, it just spins the gangs. So yeah. It's a lot of times better just to hit the hit them with a hammer and they'll start to turn. It's a quick little jerk. And there's nothing on this end. Okay. She's loose. It's wanting to spin the whole gang as he's wrenching down on it. I'll heat it up. Okay. You got some tire trouble? Okay, go take it to the shop for a repair. Okay, Daddy will fix your tire. That's what we do. Yeah, Daddy's dead. Daddy dead. Mm hmm. Yeah, the delay. Get some new washers. That's fine. But you probably want to nail that thing or something. Any part show up today? Uh uh. Well, I got it. Good job. I just can't touch it. Yes. Put a little heat on it, mm -hmm. and then it works. Well, I'm not a little. <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> I stopped filming and just started watching, and then I realized he was getting it. He was hitting it with his big, uh, well, the small sledgehammer, the handheld, single hand sledgehammer here. And uh, then he started hitting it with that. The camera person needs to pay attention to what needs to be filmed. Look at that sky now. It was total, total cloudness. Terrible earlier. So much for an hour window. We've got quite a bit of light and sun and not rain. So he's going to take that off, put it on the front. So that's going to be complete. We'll be able to finish that part of our filming and completion. And he'll have to see about some big washers to fill in the space there. So might have to make another parts run. there. 
you have one big washer in it, some of them little washers you can just to give yeah. it something to spin. Well, there's five, six of the thin ones. So it's not spinning on there. And I was like, ooh, score. Because I got to keep them little enough to be able to use that keeper. Yeah. I'm get my pipe wrench and I'll try to get a little while standing up. Georgie in the shop. I don't know what he's tapping. He's tapping track doors. He, he repairs equipment, huh, Bethy? Yep. I'm going to go see what he's doing. Where you going with my food? Daddy's hands are dirty, Georgie. I don't want any more. I ate a lot. Betsy. I think she went inside. Jack's over by the cows. They already had chips. Well, Jack and Murdoch did. I don't know if Trey did. I didn't see. Of course, we're saving time and labor by not bringing the tractor over and lifting it up, of course. <laughs> Safety 
forth. Oh, because the tractor has the soil mover attached, right? You got a scraper pinching over here. Yep. Is it on the wrong side of the desk? On this side? It looks like it's hitting right. We always talk about farm safety with tools and implements, and I wanted to point out these farm jacks are the deadliest farm tool ever invented because they fall, they collapse. They don't really have a very wide base for the job that they do. He had it sitting right here, and it started shifting, and the whole thing just let loose and fortunately he wasn't like underneath it trying to tug that into place i actually had to stop filming and take george inside because he kept coming too close to the disc and then he was trying to sit on the tongue so we just took him in but you see how small that base is that's my foot it's not very big it's probably four inches by six inches and then the handle sometimes just let go and it just tup 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 Clicked itself right down and over, and there it went. I told him he should just sell it and get rid of it. Then next time he'll just hook up the tractor with the hydraulics and lift it and do it the way he should have instead of depending on that jack because they're seriously not safe. So we've got it lowered down, and we're lining up everything here with the pins that go in, and that is just the final assembly piece. It's a little bit fussy trying to line up the front hole with the back hole, so he's having to have me help him line up everything with the pry bar as we're going. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> More auction stuff. That's the second time we've dove in to our auction supplies. And I just cleaned this up for him earlier today. He had it dumped out. It is a quart mason jar full of odd size cotter pins of this and that of a 50 year collection from an auction that we got and we were just finding washers to fit on the ends here and to make up for the space on the back for the part that we moved up to the front all right so as promised he's out here doing some disking to put in a headland row here at the edge of his field it's been a busy day already he likes to add trees to his hay fields. He wants to eventually have that pasture for the cows. So if I can zoom in here a little bit, he's got a baby tree right over here. It's hard for me to see even through my lens on my side because it is a sunny, bright day. So we added red oaks. There's another here, over there, and on the far, far side of the field. Now we always cage the trees so that deer don't get to them. He went one day without caging them, and that far, far tree, boy, the deer got after that. So if it makes it, that would be great because the deer took off probably 50% of the foliage, and the top is heat stressed. He wanted to get this little strip finish. There's a chance of some rain late tonight and overnight. So he'll be able to hit this with the planter and get it growing. It'll be two weeks behind the rest of it. But it'll get caught up. His gang's all put together over there. You can hear the rocks. Rock 
rocky and very clay prone field. Oh, it's disking it up real good. So that's the repair on the John Deere disc, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.